What is up, guys? This is Alex Osterley, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Food Marketing Nerds. Today, we're talking with Pat Warner, who's the VP of Culture at The Waffle House. And for those of you not familiar with The Waffle House brand, they have over 1,800 locations in 25 states, so they are huge. And they've also got our social media presence that's gotten them coverage on Colbert, ESPN, TMZ, just to name a few. And Waffle House is practically a case study of how to turn customers and employees into advocates for the brand. And a lot of it comes from using social media how it is intended to be used. So if you're focused on building your company's culture and how to measure the impact of your social media efforts, you're going to really take a lot away from this interview with Pat. So let's go on and get into it. Welcome to the Food Marketing Nerds Podcast, where we talk marketing, branding, and social media with the smartest minds in the business. Here's your host, Alex Osterly. Hey, Pat, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being on. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So can you tell our listeners a little bit more about your job and uh, your career and background? Well, I am the Waffle House Director of Culture, and I hear people snickering out there. That's okay. Uh, at Waffle House, we, we feel like we have a very unique corporate culture. And so my role really is to be the guardian of that culture, make sure that we are staying true to what we say we are as a company. Uh, and, and a lot of that includes internal communication and talking with our people in the field and, and through various mediums. We do a lot of surveys, focus groups, phone hotlines. I do a lot of showing up in the field, talking to people. So we're, we're really big on what we call our listening agenda. And then really, it's all about monitoring uh, what our associates are saying about the company, which now with social media, we can kind of do that now, kind of monitor here in Atlanta, kind of those conversations that are going on. But there's also a lot of just you know, shoe leather of getting out there and talking face to face with people and doing focus groups and, and things like that. But we, we find that's very important to make sure that our frontline associates are feeling what we say we want to do as a company, if that makes sense. No, it definitely does. Are there any particular examples of maybe an initiative that you guys have been working on in the past, recent past that you've had a hand in and in going out and actually seeing that through? Yeah, one of the biggest ones here, here in the last few years is we, we got a lot of feedback from our restaurant managers and our district managers that they wanted to pay their people more money because they were getting quality people, but they had some restrictions on what they could pay them and they were losing quality people who've been with us for a long time. So we took that feedback, looked at things, and then we've actually adjusted that now where they actually have a, a, a more structured ramp up program where they can, can give people in the field more money if the manager feels they deserve it. So that, that was one thing that, you know, we, we kind of had some restrictions from the centralized area, not realizing the impact it had out in the field. And, it really became clear when we were talking to our unit managers and our, and our district managers that they were losing quality people because they they had restrictions on what they could pay them. So that was one of the big lessons we learned from it. But we're always continuing to learn different things from the field, just mainly because we're asking the questions and, and listening. And then the key thing is we're doing something about it. It's not just we're just listening, we're listening, we're listening. People in the field see that we have made some changes through the years. Uh, the pay is one of the big ones that a lot of them saw. And we gave the credit back to their management team that this is where it came from through our listening agenda. So that probably is one of the biggest ones in the last few years that, that I can think of right off the top of my head. But there's been a lot of smaller ones of just even adjusting internal communications, how often we send things out, how we send things out to our people in the field to make sure that they're getting it. You know, we're pitching it, but make sure they got to be able to catch it. Just even tweaks in that has helped a lot. Uh, and it all comes from that being open to the feedback from the field, which I think a lot of companies aren't as eager to embrace uh, as we are. And, and we're fortunate that, that our senior leadership is, is really comfortable with hearing back from the field on what they actually think about the job we're doing. So that, that, that really helps my job out a lot when I can sit down with our senior leadership and saying, this is what the folks are saying. They're willing to, to make the changes. So that's reassuring not only to me, but also to our, our folks out there in the field. If you don't live in one of the states where, where Waffle House is, is primarily located, then you don't quite grasp just the sheer size and scale of Waffle House. How many different locations <laughs> do you guys have? Well, we have 1,850 restaurants in 25 states, uh, predominantly in the southeast. That's really where we're concentrated. But each restaurant, we feel, has its own personality. Uh, and it's really evident like in the market like Atlanta where you might have two restaurants across the street from each other at a at an exit on the interstate 
each one of those restaurants is going to have its own personality, even though they look the same, the associates have the same uniforms on, the menu's the same. And that's really driven from our people behind the counter. That's really what makes each restaurant have its unique personality. So we have 1,850 unique restaurants in our chain based on the people that, that work there and eat there. And when you talk about social media, that just kind of feeds into that because that's really what social media is all about, is those conversations, talking about what's going on locally. And that, that's really what we, we try to do on the social media side. Uh, we, we kind of recognized long time ago that we really weren't in the food business. We were in the people business. And in fact, our, one of our founders, that's one of his sayings that, you know, we, we're in the people business. We serve food. And we've really kind of taken that to heart, knowing that, you know, you, you can get good bacon and eggs everywhere, but you have that experience at Waffle House. And, and people haven't experienced it. We are a 24-hour restaurant. So a lot of people experience it late at night or early in the morning, usually after something festive going on. So we're, we're a part of people's lives that way. And I think that's where people really get that connection to Waffle House is those experiences they have and that they have their favorite server, their favorite cook. So they're going to go back to the same restaurant over and over again. So even though we're a chain of 1,850 restaurants, we really want each restaurant to have its own personality. It almost be like its own little community restaurant, even though it's a part of a bigger picture. So that's really what we're striving for from the company side. And you guys have a, a pretty massive presence on, on social media. You guys have, there's been 4.6 million check-ins and you guys have over 700,000 likes and, and follows to your Facebook page. Do you guys direct people to your, your social media sites in store or how do you, how do you grow? Yeah, we do. We, we have some in-store signage on, on the back of the tickets, table tents, on, on a lot of our marketing materials. We will have that directing them to that. And, and really when we first, kind of put our toes in the social media waters it was all about getting followers but we've we've kind of realized that followers are great it's more about the interactions and the impressions and the engagements that are actually happening it, it's it's great to have hundreds of thousands of followers but it's even more important to us to have those engagements and those interactions with them and, th- and that's really what we look at we, we, we've kind of changed what we look at from when we first started at first it was like hey we need to just get a lot of people liking us and following us now it's more about the interactions and the engagements that we have because we, we feel that really kind of grows the brand that way because it gets out on other people's networks and and works out and we're reaching people that may not be following us but if we're interacting with somebody that they are following and that that really helps our brand and one of the things that i love about waffle house and your your social media presence and the culture in general is it doesn't you guys don't take yourself too seriously which is which is great <laughs> well, that's, that's the big part of it. You, you, again, we're serving bacon and eggs here. It's not like we're, you know, we're solving world problems here. And we realize that. And 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 our our team here, uh, headed by Shaheen Galani, she she does a great job. That's really her job. She is watching those uh, conversations going on and and jumping in at the appropriate time. We we don't try to push ourselves too much on the social media because we think that, you know. That's really not us. We're, we're not really big into advertising anyway, so you're not going to see us pushing uh, how great our waffles are. We'd rather engage with somebody who's talking about having a great experience or having a great waffle. We'd rather engage with them, and we, we feel like that makes us more genuine and makes us more sincere with the Waffle Nation, as we call it. And I think that has really paid off on us. We don't really try to push too much out there through social media. It's more about the engagements and interactions, and, and that's really what Shaheen's role is sitting here in Norcross, Georgia, looking at the screen of all the all the conversations going on on social media. And like I said, jumping in where it's appropriate to kind of fan the flames on the conversation, answer a question, get involved where, where it makes sense for us. Like I said, again, it's all about that those engagements and interactions uh, that, that really, we feel, drives our brand. A perfect example of that is the World Cup tweet that <laughs> went incredibly <Yes. laughs> viral. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, that, uh, again, that, that was just something... At the time, we noticed actually somebody at Waffle House asked us. Uh, the United States was playing Belgium in the World Cup, and and somebody just asked us our thoughts on the game, and we uh, just tweeted out back to them that we don't believe in Belgium waffles, and we had a typo in it, which we didn't change it. We just thought that was funny, and that really took off. It was not only on social media; it's, it's one of the one of the times that it jumped from social media to traditional media. So it took off on social media and then it was picked up by ESPN and TMZ and they were talking about it on the traditional media side. So we've had a few successes like that where, again, it wasn't planned. And and I think that's what makes us genuine. It just happened. But, uh, 
but we don't serve Belgian waffles, so we, we're just being honest. <laughs> so how do you, quick response and uh, copywriting skill, and I guess portraying the, the brand's culture and, and overall vibe through a response, is, is that's a skill to have. How do, how do you train for that? Or is it a, you're looking for a specific person or are you putting that person through a specific training to make sure that they can respond in a timely manner to, to stuff like that? I would like to think it's great leadership and, and, and <laughs> it was all planned out, but to, to be quite honest, uh, like in the, 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 the current lineup, we have Shaheen who does that for us. She just, we felt like she was a great fit for the Waffle House culture. So we have empowered her to answer without, having to go through four or five people plus legal. She understands our philosophy and, and understands what we're trying to do. And plus it, it helps us. She has a really good sense of humor and she's kind of in tune with what's going on. So all those elements help. But I think a key piece of it is that we, we trust her with the brand, uh, which a lot of companies don't want to give up that kind of trust. And they would have a lot of layers of approvals. And like I said, run it past legal twice. But in social media, you need to answer back quickly, and, and we recognize that. I don't think she goes into it every day thinking that every one of her tweets is going to be a home run. It's more about engaging with each individual customer and each individual conversation, and it's more about that versus what, what can we think of today that's going to you know, get us on TMZ tonight. It is, I don't even think that enters in her, her, her mindset, and, and it shouldn't because she is really focused on those conversations because – so the great thing about Waffle House, when you come to Waffle House, it's a, it's a small footprint. You're, you're basically eating in the kitchen. The grill's out front. There's a counter and some booths. We typically have about 40 seats. So it's a very intimate setting. So the restaurant itself is conducive to conversations, uh, whether it's about the Falcons game yesterday and how we messed up and, you know, let Kansas City beat us versus who's in the football Final Fours versus what's going on. In politics today, those conversations are going on inside our restaurants. And really on social media, it's just a continuation of that. And, and we, we see it as just an extension of what goes on in our restaurants. And I think that's why it works so well with our, our fans in the Waffle Nation is they're used to those conversations in, in the restaurant. Well, we just moved that to social media as well. And so as far as the measurement goes, it sounds like you guys first started out measuring followers and, and likes and getting more people to your page, but now it's, it's shifted over more toward engagement and getting those impressions. Exactly. We, 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 we made that shift probably a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, and then uh, fortunately we have some software now that kind of helps make that a lot easier to, uh, to gauge. So weekly we are looking at uh, total impressions, engagements, interactions, and we, we just look at it week by week. And then we do a monthly summary We'll be coming up on the year using the same software, so we'll be looking at a you know this year versus last year. So we kind of look at all that just to see uh, where we're at and kind of get a get a pulse on what's going on in the Waffle Nation. And you know we'll look and see you know what was the big spike this week, why we might be down versus last week. You know, so we look at the, all those different items to kind of keep it top of mind, mainly for uh, Kelly, Shaheen, and I, but also we report that up to our bosses too to kind of show them the reach of the brand. And really we, we share with our, our operations team too, the folks running the restaurants because it, it's, it's a pride thing for them too, because they're the ones really doing it. I mean, we're, we're tweeting about it and we're having fun with it. But if it wasn't for those cooks and waitresses and managers out there interacting with the customers, that's really what has built our brand. That that's what really has built people being so endearing to our brand is those experiences they have in the restaurants. So we, we like to share that with them too. And, and, and they'd like to see, wow, you know, our, we're reaching this many people a month through social media. And it's a pride factor for them too. So we, 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 we use it twofold. One, we're monitoring and make sure that we're doing a good job of it. But also it's a, it's a pride factor for our folks out there working in those restaurants 24 hours a day, seven days a week to kind of show them that, you know, the people in the Waffle Nation appreciate what they're doing and, and really have a love for, for what they're doing. And we want to get that back to the frontline folks so they so they can see that too and they can enjoy it. So we're just not looking at it here on a chart here in the corporate office. We, we, we get those numbers out for everybody to enjoy. Hmm, that's interesting. So you guys are sending the these engagement and impression numbers all the way down to store level? Correct. We, we get out to the restaurant managers and hopefully they will pass that on to the uh, associates. We do it about two, three times a year, kind of give them the big picture of here's what we did in the last year. We, we don't send them weekly reports because they... But, Pardon the pun, they have enough on their plate. Uh, but but typically, two, three times a year, we'll just kind of give them a, a 
here's how the brand's doing in social media, just so so they can see uh, the reach that what they're doing every day, how that translates to helping the brand on social media. And then we also, you know, the fun tweets and the customer, the compliments and all that, we, we, we get those down to the, the store level too. So they see if somebody tweets about a certain server or something, we, we try to get that in front of, of that team. So they see that, you know, the, the recognition they're getting from somebody who they just probably saw sit at the high counter, enjoyed their meal, probably didn't even tell them they enjoyed it, but they posted something about it. Hmm. Uh, so we want to get that, those stories back to them as well. Wow, that must, I've never heard of that, doing that at scale at a, at any level, really. And that's, is that a, a lot of extra hours required to sift through that information and send it out to the source? Not really. I mean, we're, we're very fortunate we're, we're using some software now that kind of helps that and Shaheen can flip that around. It's typically to an email to like a division manager in the field or to an area manager, and then they get the word out that way. Her, her job's a lot easier now that we have that software that, to help her monitor it. And so that allows her to uh, forward things and send things out uh, more quickly than, than we would in the past when we had to like have to monitor each uh, medium on a separate screen, <laughs> Facebook on one screen, Twitter on another screen, Instagram on your phone. <laughs> now we have it all in one place and it's a, it's a lot easier to manage. Do you mind if I ask what, the, what that software is? We use a sprinkler. Oh, okay. That's what, that's what I thought it would be. Yeah. That is, it's very powerful. We've been on sprinkler now. We're coming up a year on it and, and, what it really has done is made Shaheen's job a lot more efficient. She can reach more people now and talk to customers a lot faster now using Sprinkler. It really helps. And, and then you have the back end of all the analytics, too, that we really didn't have in the past. I, I'm going to reach out to Sprinkler for a, um, a podcast sponsorship. There's been so many people who have said good <laughs> things about them. So, um, yeah, I think I think they uh, we, we, we look at a lot of different companies, and, and we went with them based on their reputation. So I, you guys are getting a ton of engagement across all the different platforms that you guys are on. Is that all organic engagement? We try. I mean, we will push some things out. Like we just launched gift cards for the first time in our history. We're a little slow to the table on that, but we're fine with that. So we, we kind of pushed <laughs> a lot of that out to mainly let the folks know that they're available this year and how to order them. We may roll out a new product and let folks know about it that way, or we may we just did a, an event with University of North Carolina versus NC State and we had a bet on their football game and whichever school won, we came in and gave away free waffles, hash browns and coffee. And so we, we will push that out. But I think the majority of our engagements are organic. It's just Shaheen monitoring and, and getting involved with different conversations. That's impressive. And you guys have all these different fun and interesting, whether it's partnerships or mini campaigns that you do within social media. One of, one of which being this, I see a, a Stephen Colbert video on your Facebook page. How did that come about? <laughs> yeah, that, again, that that was all organic. I, like I said, I wish we could take credit for that uh, back here. Of, but uh, one morning we woke up and Stephen Colbert and Sergio Simpson on the show the night before sang a Waffle House song. We have two boxes in all of our restaurants and we have probably 30 to 40 Waffle House specific songs that we have that we have produced through the years. And they did one called No Shirt, No Shoes, No Knuckleheads. And so we woke up really with people texting and calling us, hey, did you see that last night on the Colbert show? So we saw it, and basically they did the song, and on the show, Stephen challenged us to put it on the jukebox, which that that decision was you know, made in two seconds. <laughs> uh, so we actually the next day reached out via social media at first to them, saying, yes, we're going to put it on the jukebox. And they came back and said, well, why don't you come up here and cook us waffles? And we said, okay. We went up there and we cooked them waffles. And just kind of led to that that engagement there. And then they came back and said, when the song gets on the jukebox, Stephen and Sergio wants to go to Charleston, where Stephen Colbert is from, to the restaurant that he used to go to and debut the song on that jukebox. Again, that was a, another one of those two-second decisions. We're like, sure, what day? We set that all up. And so then they came to the restaurant, shot a lot of that footage, and then we just – as they posted it, we just kind of reposted it. And that, that was one of the videos they did of him ordering pancakes at Waffle House, which we're not allowed to say the P word. So as you see in the video, our, our associate punched him in the mouth. And that was really our associate. Uh, everybody behind the counter, the, there were no stunt doubles, uh, which was kind of kind of scary when Stephen was trying to show her how to throw a fake punch. We're just all thinking, oh, please, I hope she doesn't hit him. Uh, and and like they kept saying, good actress. It, 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 she did. She did great. But they, he kept said, "No, hit, punch it harder, punch harder." And we're like, "Oh, please!" You know, 
she's she's not a stunt person, <laughs> but she did great. She had a great personality and she had fun doing that. And and so they posted that and and we reposted it and went went along that way. But yeah, that all started with them doing a song and challenging us to put us on the jukebox and. Next thing you know, you, you you have two placements on the Colbert show, and and their his song is on the jukebox. If you go to Waffle House, and you can listen to No Shirt, No Shoes, No Knuckleheads. That's great. It, it sounds like, from what I've what I've looked into for for Waffle House, it sounds like you guys also have some of your own music. The Waffle House records that you've created Correct. for the yeah, the we jukebox. have the, well, exactly. And those are all songs about the waffle house they've evolved through the years we we started doing our own songs in 1984 and so if you listen to someone from the 80s they sound like they're from the 80s versus the ones that are out today and and we've evolved them well we'll do we're now kind of do some music videos on some of the songs we we debuted one last summer and so we did a video in conjunction with that so we'll obviously push that out to the fans through uh social media as well but yeah we have waffle house records and we can't announce anything right now but we are working with after Stephen Colbert, we have other people who have come to us saying, hey, we want to do a Waffle House song, too. So we, we, we can't release the names yet, but, but stay tuned. There's going to be some more uh, Waffle House songs coming out from people you may know. Uh, now I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, there's a lot of these different things that Waffle House does just kind of based out of this is us. This is what we're going to do. And is there a justification required to the C-suite on spending budget to create a whether it's create a, a custom song for inside the restaurant or, or responding to, to tweets. I mean, clearly it's, it's, it's paying off huge for you guys, but without that, it's just really hard to, to quantify and measure. I'm just curious if there's a, an ROI justification phase for, for any of these initiatives. Yeah, it's not really a, a an ROI analysis. We do our chairman and our CEO, they, they get it for lack of a better word, they understand the Waffle House brand probably better than, than we do. And, and so they know that this is how we engage with our, our customers. And it's not just one way, it's through the music, it's through social media, it's through the, the in-store point of purpose, it's through our regulars club, which is a, you know, our email. They understand there's multiple ways to reach our customers and that they have been supportive all along with, with what we want to do because they they are in the restaurants every day. Our, our chairman, our CEO, the, you know, they spend the majority of their time in the restaurants. So they're seeing it firsthand, the results of it, of people coming in and saying, hey, did you see Colbert last night? That was great. Uh, or, hey, the new Waffle House song is great. So they're seeing those results in the restaurant. So, uh, you know, of course, we look at the numbers and we, and, and we look at the ROI, but it, it, it's more of a that's who we are. And any way to uh, enhance that and promote that, they, they are open for we have gone to them with a lot of wacky ideas and rarely have we've had pushback. I don't know if we want to do that. Typically they're, they're on board and, and, and they've been real supportive of, of what we try to do, you know, even to the point of, you know, like I say, most, most companies don't allow that kind of engagement with the customers without going through seven levels of approval, but they see the, the value in that. So they, they, they have kind of empowered us to do that and then given us that trust with the brand, which, which is a big trust. Uh, to, to give up that kind of power to, to uh, somebody that's going to respond back in 10 seconds. I feel like Waffle House is a perfect case study of, of why you should be highly active on social media and, and doing all the things you guys are doing to build the brand and the culture. If somebody didn't quite grasp the concept of why you would be on, on social media as a, as a brand or give that creative freedom to someone who has a ton of power in their hands to, to represent the brand, what would be what would be a selling point to say this? Okay, this is why we do it. Well, I, I think it starts with who you are as a company, who you are as a brand. We have built up our brand through word of mouth. We don't heavily advertise. We do a lot of local store marketing and word of mouth. So for us, social media is just an extension of that. Social media is today's word of mouth. Uh, what, what I tell other companies is look at social media and be true to your company on social media. Don't try to be a brand that you're not on social media, then somebody goes to your location and it's a totally different experience. Those have to be connected. From the consumer side, when I go on social media, I want to engage with people. I don't want to be hit with a lot of messages pushing from companies. So I think take it easy on how much that you use your social media audience to promote something. Yeah, you know, you have Facebook ads, you have promoted tweets. Go that area versus using your primary, we call the mothership primary mothership to to get those branding messages out 
pay for the advertising, but use be, be more true to yourself with the social media and, and get to those interactions with the customers because that really pays off. It, it's amazing to see people on social media get excited when Waffle House likes their tweet or when, you know, you, even if somebody has a bad experience and we reach out to them and want to know more information, you can see that they appreciate that, that we're listening. And I, I think that gets you more value than if you're just telling anybody what, how great a company you are on the, on the main thing. That's, that's what the ads are for. You, you use the ads for that. Use the main channel for the interacting with your customers. Are you guys able to, are you assigning a, a monetary value or ROI to a, an engagement or is it more of an aggregate of the exposure? Not yet. It, it, it's more looking at the total reach and interaction. We're looking at different ways to look at the data. And, and, and right now we haven't said any monetary things to it yet, but that will evolve. And I think, you know, social media in general, the, the whole analytics has keeps evolving. And so I think we will get there eventually. But again, for us, it's just how many people have reached, how many people are we engaging with. But that's really what we're looking at. And I think that's a really great approach, given the, the data and the, the status of social media in general today. You mentioned tying in your social media presence to the, the, the brand and the experience in store. If there was a, a similar company who is having any other difficulties as far as their, their culture went, what might be a, a good place to start to identify how you could improve that culture? Uh, I think you ask. I mean, it goes, goes back to what we say about our listing agenda. I mean, ask your customers, ask, ask your associates, uh, that they'll tell you because <laughs> they, they're, they're, the folks on the front line, they're, they're living it every day. So they're going to tell you what's working, what's not. And they, we're, we're fortunate on both cases, our customers and our associates are very, uh, uh, are very honest with us. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to kind of get it with a bark off and all. So, uh, uh, we're, we're very fortunate from that, but I think if you don't ask, you're not going to know. Yeah, that makes sense. And this has been, it's great to hear your perspective from somebody who, a company that's doing it really well. And anybody who's listening to this interview who hasn't seen Waffle House's Facebook presence or any other social media platforms, so definitely go check it out. Cause it's, it's a, it's, it's basically a, a, like I said before, a case study of how to do it right. And I, I'm just curious, is there anything that were, were there any hard learnings over these past few years or uh, since you assumed your role as the director of culture? that you wish you would have known beforehand that would have really helped you to do the job? You know, it, it, that's, that's a tough question. I've been associated with Waffle House for 17 years and, and I feel like I, you know, I, I get the culture. I think one of the challenges we have as a company is to getting people to the point where they understand and appreciate the culture. I think mean, that's on both sides of the counter. Uh, and, and I don't know what that magic bullet is. Uh, I, I wish I did. But I think that's key for any company is that people engaging with your culture and, and what's that tipping point where they, they, they finally get it and they finally mesh with your culture. Cause, cause that's the ultimate goal. And I think uh, if, if, if there's any secret formulas out there for that, I mean, I, I think some would be very wealthy as a, as a consultant to businesses because I think all businesses are, are searching for that. So I, I would say that it's more how, how do we get people more involved with the culture into that tipping point of where they really have it ingrained in them. And they're, they're really a part of the Waffle House nation. So we've got, we've got a few questions that we ask each of our interviewees. And, um, I know you, you guys, you said you're, you've incorporated sprinkler to, to kind of streamline the reporting and, and, uh, communication side of social media. Are there any other productivity tools or, or, uh, routines that you do on a daily basis to make sure you're, you're getting your job done? Uh, for me personally, I am a disciple and an advocate for David Allen's getting things done. I don't know how anybody can do anything without that type of a organizational system, especially in today's world where you, you're hit with so many different items, you know, just every minute of text, email, uh, what have you. Uh, I look to that really on the company side. You know, Sprinkler really has helped us a lot. You know, Shaheen kind of monitors that every day and kind of keeps us updated uh, and of course, I have some other tools. We we have some you know clipping services where we monitor uh, traditional media. So uh, I get that every morning. So really, my mornings are about kind of seeing you know looking at the overnight and see see what happened. And and to be quite honest, nothing beats a good Google alert to let you know what's going on because they're, they're instant and they're then it, it's amazing how many of those I get a day. And and I love each one of them because it, it's great to kind of get in front of what, what's going on out there. Cause I think that's a challenge for everybody, especially when you have so many locations in different States 
to uh, to kind of get your head around what's going on with the brand each day. That helps me. Then I said, like I said, David Allen's getting things done. Uh, approach to organization is is a key for me, both both personal and and professionally. I, I, I don't think I could uh, operate without that. And that might have just answered the the last question that we always ask, which is, if there is there any books that you re- or are there any books that you recommend to people? Yeah, that's one of them. Uh, I like uh, Tipping Point. Malcolm Gladwell, that's a great book. Oh, all his books are great, but uh, David and Goliath, Tipping Point, I really, really enjoy reading his take on things. Crucial Conversations, uh, and the author is leaving me now. That That is a big one in business because you have to have those crucial conversations, but you have to have them in a professional way. Uh, anyone who manages people, that that would be it. So yeah, the, so the, those those are the main ones right there. Well, this has been great, Pat, and thank you so much for, for sharing your insights on what Waffle House is doing really well and... Uh, I think a lot of companies can learn a lot from. Uh, what, what's a good place to to find out more about Waffle House and maybe to be the first ones to know about the the new Waffle House record songs coming out? Well, the best way is to go to wafflehouse.com and uh, make sure you you sign up for the regulars club. That's where you're going to get the emails and you get the exclusive offers. And we let people know on the regulars club what we're doing before we announce it to the public. So uh, go to wafflehouse.com and sign up for the regulars club, and then just you know follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Snapchat. I'm trying to think of anything else. LinkedIn. If you want to get the scoop, get in the regular club because that, that, we, we let them know about things uh, well before we, we, we release it to the public. So uh, that, that, that's the place that, that you'll know what the next song is or the next menu item is, or you can actually get the link to uh, get your Valentine's reservations before the public can. So uh, some exclusive offers there for the, our regulars. That's great. Well, thanks again, Pat. This has been great. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to the Food Marketing Nerds Podcast. For interview transcripts or to download your free social media ebook, check out foodmarketingnerds.com.